prove this next gentleman coming to the stage, also one of my OG partners, a favorite on the San Diego, Los Angeles, every state in America comedy scene. This guy had a fucking Toyota that he drove 400,000 miles doing stand-up all over this great country of ours. And uh, tonight, he drove his car after that, thank God, uh, to, uh, to come down and rock this show for you guys tonight. So give him some love, the one and only Mr. Sean McBride. Let's hear it, come on. What's up? What's up? Uh, keep it going for Zach, everybody. Let him hear it. Uh, I didn't think I was going to get emotional about the death of my, my old car, but yeah. No, I did. It died 430,000 miles. The car died in Victorville, California. Of all, what a shitty place to die, right? Like, what an incorrectly named city. Victorville, city of champions, come on, absolutely not. That is the anus of the IE. And that is where the silver bullet resides for eternity. Sadly, I know, I know, I had, it was, a, it was a great car, a great car, one of those, like I had to get rid of it because I, I'm engaged now, and it was one of those cars where I had so long where it was like every time my fiance would be in the car, all I'd be able to think about is how I had had sex with other girls in that car. Yes, thank you, one person appreciated that, everyone else is like, you're a fucking asshole for thinking about that while your lady is in the car. Um, this is my first time in front of strangers outside of the grocery store in three and a half months. I'm here with you, with you guys. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's, cra it's crazy to think like how long it has been, like human interaction. I, mean, I guess we'll know in about two weeks whether or not all of us getting together was a good idea or not, you know? But I'm here to ride it out with you all. We're in this together. Yeah, cheers. Cheers to all of you. There you go. Yeah, cheers, cheers, cheers. Uh, how about a hand for Yaniv and everybody that helped put this on? Um, this is such a, you know, because I know, I know you guys are all friends. And uh, like I said, this is my first time in front of strangers. So I hope you guys accept me as a friend. That uh, also means on, on Twitch where they're probably just shaming me all over the internet right now. That's usually how things work on the internet. Um, but uh, it was, it's, it's been so weird being in quarantine. I don't know if you guys feel like you've gotten smarter or dumber throughout this whole, smarter. I, I, <laughs> I feel like I've gotten dumber. Uh, I, I, I really do. I think the, the dumbest, my dumbest point of quarantine was I got into this habit, especially early on, where I would just like get up first thing in the morning and I'd go out to my car in the driveway and I'd just turn on the radio, smoke out, and you know, next thing I know, I've been sitting there for like three hours. And I would, I got, and I would do this at the beginning of the day, middle of the, I mean, I'm one of those people, you know, I, I smoke pot from time to time, daily. I said that to him earlier while I was outside and he laughed. I was like, I'm going to try that during the show today. I think I gave it a show. Yeah, I'm going to try that at the next show too. Thank you for the positive affirmation. It's all love with Elixir. That's what I love, that's what I love about it. But no, I, I got in and so I would do that at the, at the beginning. I'd start the day, go smoke, listen to the radio. And then at the end of the night, I'd go do the same thing. Smoke, listen to the radio. One night, I just got super stoned and went to bed, didn't turn my car off. Yeah, so you guys know what happened next, right? I got up the next morning and my fucking radio didn't work, guys. Because <laughs> I, I, you, you, you didn't need a car at that point in COVID. The, no one needed a car. We were all, I was just, oh, that, this was just my... My, my, my 2009 Scion $6,000 AM FM radio. That was all it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the, the, I call it white lightning, the replacement for the silver bullet. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, it, was, it was weird. Um, I had the, the, amongst like, this is my first time being in front of strangers outside of the grocery store. I actually did 
run into a buddy the other day at the grocery store, and uh, I, had, I had my first dab in almost four months. <laughs> first, first dab back, everybody. First dab back. And see, I'm one of the, I, I can never turn down a dab, but dabs rarely work out for me. They ne like, usually one of two things will happen. I either start sweating out of my kneecaps, uh, or I, I immediately have to take a, a powerful, painful dump. It's, regardless, something typically is unlocked and it's not good. Still though, even knowing this, I can, never, I can never turn down a dab. And I ran into my buddy Bijan in the parking lot of, of the grocery store and Bij is one of those guys, like you know those guys where like they have a dab rig inside a metal briefcase they keep in their car at all times. Yeah, I, and I love those guys where they're just like, we're gonna just set up shop right here on the trunk of the car, 1 p.m. on a Wednesday. And we're, and we're just going to do it. And, and I did. And I, I was lucky, though. I, I took my first dab back, and it, it didn't have that effect. Of, I didn't start sweating. I felt, I felt pretty good. The only problem was this happened before I went into the grocery store. Yeah, so I just I, I didn't get anything that I had got sent there with a list to go buy. I just bought all this. I got home. My fiance looked. She's like, this is some mother bitch's order. I don't even know. <laughs> What the fuck did you just get? Um, I, uh, oh my God, this, uh, the new normal, man. The new normal. Uh, the, the new normal, I, I realize now you have, to, you have to account for the amount of toilet paper that women use. Yeah, yeah. I'm, women use far more toilet paper than men. I know this because I didn't have to ration it other than the last three months. And once you start keeping an eye on it, it's just like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you have far exceeded your rations. <laughs> and, and, and now we're dipping into my, my rations. My, where, my, there was my. Am I hitting a little too close to home for some of us? Oh my God. I, uh, <laughs> no, but I'm seriously like, ladies, you need to slow your roll. <laughs> three and a half months off, three and a half months off. Uh, I think my, my lady and I, we, we have watched every single murder documentary currently streaming on all platforms. All of them, every single, we're actually, no, we're ahead of the game. We are two, we're two ahead. There actually needs to be two more murders that have documentaries produced about them to catch up how far ahead we are with the murder documentaries. Yeah, that is like, I, and, and it fucks with you when you go to bed every single night to murder. And that's the only thing she likes to watch <laughs> is the murder documentaries. And I'm not gonna lie, guys, the, the, they're getting a little formulaic. Okay, I know where these stories are going, and at least, at least with my girl, she always, it's always the exact same story every time, same setup, right? It's always some fucking idiot dude gets caught messing around, right? The woman snaps, gets super pissed, she goes out, gets a gun, learns how to shoot it, and then one of two things will happen, okay? She either kills the home wrecker, kills the dude, lives to tell her story from prison, or she chooses door number two, kills the home wrecker, kills herself, lets the man live the rest of his life with all of society know he was the lying, cheating piece of shit who caused the fucking tragedy in the first place. Yeah, on any basic 12 episode murder documentary season, any one of them, there'll be three or four episodes guarantee falling under door number one or door number two. The reason I tell you that, fellas, is watch out, <laughs> okay? I finally caught on to this. I said something to my fiance. I was just like, is there something you're trying to tell me? She's like, yeah, don't fuck up. <laughs> don't fuck this up. Uh, 
The other thing that sucks about this, like I, I finally have started, uh, you know, driving around, you know, going to different places, doing things, trying to be smart about it, just keep my distance, you know, like do, do what you can. But I've realized, like anybody else, like I know we, I'm sure we got some weed delivery guys here and know what I'm talking about. Like there are no more public restrooms anymore. Like no, yeah, some of you are probably like, good, they're fucking dirty. But it's like when you're like me and you're, Pounding the pavement every single day, you rely on the McDonald's and the Starbucks bathrooms of the world. Like I'm at the point now where if I meet a dude and he says that he doesn't keep a pee cup in his car, I don't fucking believe him. <laughs> yeah, that's the new guy that says he doesn't jerk off. You're lying to my face. Every man keeps a pee cup in their car. Okay, apparently I'm just the only one. <laughs> Nobody else wants to fucking admit it. <laughs> Getting some love from the Hive Distro. Shout out to the Hive Distro. Yeah. Hive, we got uh, the Elixir Cure fam hey. in here. Hey, yeah. See, I knew you were Elixir Cure. You're wearing sunglasses inside like Jack Nicholson. That's how you know you're cool. Um... I really, I don't know how I would have gotten through quarantine without marijuana. Um, <laughs> it would have been impossible without it. Like I went out when, you know, remember like those first couple weeks when everyone was scared, everybody, and you were like getting judged hard for doing anything. I was still like showing up at the dispensary five minutes before they opened so I could sneak in, get the fuck out before anybody would see me. But I got, I got uh, worried right off the bat. I got scared a little bit because remember how they, they came out and they were like, you know, you got to have your lungs in shape. You can't smoke anything. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, I got to do something because I'm one of those people, like, I love burning flour. I love it. I love it. I love it. Like, I'm all about greens. I, 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 can't, I can't get enough. Like, and I've tried everything, but I went and I, I was just like, all right, I got to get ready for it. So I went out. I got a, a Pax 3 and a G pen. And... Uh, and now that we're all comfortable doing normal things, and the reason I bring that up is because I got a Pax 3 and a G pen for sale. <laughs> Since I don't need that shit anymore because I'm just going back to regular trees. <sighs> I feel like marijuana has come so far. Um, my, my favorite thing is like before everything went to shit, uh, one of my, one of my, because I, I do, I do want to keep things somewhat positive <laughs> during this. Um, before, before all, everything went to hell, uh, the D.A.R.E. program actually came out and announced that marijuana is no longer the gateway drug. And I thought that was very big of them to admit that because I, I, like, I don't know, I'm, I'm 36. I don't know how old everyone else is. Like, anyone else have D.A.R.E. growing up? Yeah. You guys remember D.A.R.E. I drug, <laughs> abuse, resistance, education. Yeah, D.A.R.E. To keep kids off drugs. There's no hope with dope. You booze, you lose. Puff, puff, pass. <laughs> you guys remember Dare, right? But that was, that was always their mantra that, uh, you know, don't do drugs. It's the gate. Don't do, don't do, don't smoke weed. It's the gateway drug. It will lead to harder drugs and it will ruin your life. That was always what they said. And I, I and it, it worked for me. Like, it's, it's scared. Like, because this is the honest to God truth. I've never done anything harder than marijuana in my entire life. I haven't. Like, we, we got any, uh, based on that silence, I would imagine we, all, we also got some cokeheads here, <laughs> too. And that's okay, man. I don't, I don't look down upon anyone who wants to party. You know, it's Saturday. You know, there's, uh, there's plenty of people I'm friends with who are like, I start the day with weed. I keep the night going <laughs> with cocaine. No, and I get it. Like, cocaine, it's like, to me, like, weed is like, the chill kids drug, it's the, you know, flying under the radar, you want to just be out, like, the, that, that's weed to me. Cocaine, that's, that's the cool kids drug, right? Like, everybody knows, like, this is the cool kid, you know, like, and that was how I always felt, like, and, you know, coke, cool kids drug, but, like, this is the honest God truth, I've never tried it in my life, but I, I think, <laughs> I would love to think, you know, as someone that's never tried it before, I wish you could use, like, the coke terminology, all that stuff surrounding cocaine, makes it sound very cool. Like, and I think that's really all it is. Like, I wish you could use that Coke lingo on other things, trying to make it sound cool, right? Like somebody come up to me like, hey, Sean, you want a piece of gum? I'd be like, yeah, I'll take a bump.
Yo, Sean, you got to try this salsa, man. Eh, just give me a key's worth. <laughs> Would you like some whipped cream with your hot chocolate? <sighs> you know, I shouldn't, but <sighs> fire me up a rail. <laughs> if you guys take nothing from, from my set tonight, I want you to take this piece of advice. A buddy of mine told me this. Uh, did you know... The reason that you're supposed to blow lines of cocaine with a rolled up $100 bill, uh, it's great. The reason that you're supposed to do this, uh, it's because if you don't have 100 bucks, you shouldn't be fucking buying cocaine. <laughs> We're all friends now, I wanted to bless the crowd. <laughs> it's weird, man. Uh, I'm supposed to, I've had to cancel so many stand-up gigs uh, since all this shit happened. Um, I was supposed to go to Arizona next month. And as of right now, the shows are technically still on. Like, I don't mind doing this. Like, I like this because, like, I can just drive home after this. Like, that's, that's cool with me. Like, I, anyone else worried about, like, the next time, has anyone stayed in a hotel? Yeah. Something like, you, you, ha you actually have since this happened? Twice? You're just not even fucking chance, and you're like, it was nine bucks, it's better than my own place, I'm fucking out of here. <laughs> two, you went to two places. Where did you go? Uh, that doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> ladies, if you'd like to buy his time, I love that. I feel like we should, like, since we're streaming this, like, clearly Twitch wants to get him on stage. Let's ask him more questions about that. <laughs> how mu on average, how much soul glow residue do you leave on the hotel room pillows while you're there? <laughs> Shit, that ain't nothing but ultra perm. Oh, my God. See, my thing is, my biggest worry about staying in a hotel is I just, I feel like moving forward, if people really want to be comfortable, I should be able to like see the log of the people who have stayed in that bed prior to me and I should be able to vet their social media pages. <laughs> yes, I want to know the type of person that I'm sharing a bed with. I think that's totally, same, and it, you know, that's the other thing too, like it's like, even though you guys, everyone here is friends for the most part, like, I'm going to have a, it's going to take a minute before I smoke a joint with a stranger again. Yeah, and that sucks because pre-COVID, that was one of my favorite things in the world to do. I loved smoking a joint and getting to know someone. Like, for me to do that now, I'll still smoke with a stranger, but only if I get to vet their social media channel beforehand. Check it out. See what the fuck they're posting. What else have they been getting into on the weekends before I'm smoking a jay? Again, I turned everybody on that. I'm sorry. But I, I, I feel like, you know, that's something we, we should be, you know, you want to be smart about it. You know, that's the thing. Like, I, I love marijuana so much, even though it makes me do a lot of stupid shit. It does. Like, anyone else, you've ever gotten so stoned, you spend 20 minutes looking for a lighter only to find it in your hand? Or how about this, you ever gotten so stoned, you turn to pass the bowl to someone you're talking to on the phone? <laughs> I did that on my way down here. Right at the 405-710 interchange. But I'm scared though, like I'm supposed to go to Arizona next month, and Arizona is one of those places where it's just like, nothing's happening, the only corona I know is the beer, who wants to golf? That, that's what it's like. like. I'm sorry, but Arizona does not get the credit they deserve for being the Florida of the West Coast. Yeah, they do. Like I, I went, I, The last time I was out in Arizona, I went out, I started, I was in Lake Havasu. And it's just, it's a different world out there. I'm in Lake Havasu. I'm walking into the venue. Right as a guy's walking out, he has a t-shirt on. It says, honk if you want to see a gun fired from a motorcycle. Yeah. Right as I'm walking in the van, I'm like, all right, I am definitely not in California anymore. <laughs> okay. 
Next night, next night, I'm in uh, a Bullhead City, Arizona. I'm at a st- I'm at a crosswalk, and I'm just sitting there waiting. This guy rolls past me on a motorcycle. He's got a shirt on. On the back, it says, "If you can read this, the bitch fell off." <laughs> yeah. I'm like watching it go by. I was like, did he not see the tweets? Like, you can't wear shirts like that anymore. What happened? But see, that is the thing. Arizona, don't judge a book by its color. Cover. Next night after that, I'm in, I'm in Kingman. Kingman, Arizona. It's not, not, not what you think. Not what you think. I'm in Kingman, Arizona. I just fucked up speaking. I'm in Kingman, Arizona. If you ever go there, there's nothing fucking royal about that place. Kingman, I saw something I've never seen in my entire life. I saw a woman driving a Harley Davidson motorcycle with a dude on the back riding bitch. Yeah, I've never seen, say he's just on there, just, we there yet, babe? I pull up to him at a stoplight and I, I, I'm just like, I got, I got to say something. All right. And I rolled down the window. I was just like, so how did this happen? Before I could even finish what I'm saying, the guy goes, hey, man, I got a DUI. Mind your own fucking business. <laughs> <laughs> the light turns green. They vroom on. I just sat there like a little bitch because <laughs> I didn't want any trouble. Yeah, the woman looked like she could handle herself, too. (laughs) And I thought it would be better if I just held back and waited it out. Uh, But that's the the weird thing, man. Um, I don't know what's going to happen moving forward. I I, I can say this. I I couldn't, you know, as far as popping my cherry in front of strangers, I couldn't have asked for a better-looking group of people to do it. This is a very... Sexy crowd, man. Very sexy crowd. And uh, I hope uh, God's watching over all of us when we leave here today. Uh, yeah, I, and the reason I bring that up is because uh, I actually I got to see my Aunt Janine very recently. And uh, I, she really wanted, she didn't want to go by herself, but she asked me if I would take her to church. And I was like, all right, I will do that. And I took her to church. And it was the first time I've been inside a church in 15 years. And I'm sitting in there. And I remembered I had this come to Jesus moment, right? I'm sitting there bored out of my fucking mind, man. Couldn't wait to get out of there. And that's when it dawned on me. We would be way more religious as a society if they would just give us drive through church. Yeah. Right? Right? How can you imagine, like, how great, and then it's perfect for this COVID era. You could just roll up 9.55 on a Sunday morning before football even starts, just, (laughs) Welcome to Our Lady of Peace. This is Sister Peter Joseph. How may I take your order? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, hi. Um, I'll take uh, forgiveness for all of my sins. (laughs) Off the dollar menu. Uh, Loaves and fish sticks. And uh, a holy water. You want that small, regular, venti, or God-sized? You know, it's Sunday morning. You better God-size me. That'll be one act of contrition, three Hail Marys, and a $7.78 donation and ties to the offering plate at window number two. Please pull through. Peace be with you. And also with you. Thanks a lot for coming out. Stay safe, everybody. Oh, Sean McBride, everybody. Let him hear it. Come on.